video we're going to be looking at the sub D tab within Ansys Discovery. Um, first of all, if you're not seeing the sub D tab, the way you turn it on is if you go to the file in the top left hand corner, then to settings, once that loads, if you go into advanced, then you've got your beta options down here and you can turn on subdivision surface tools. Obviously please note this is in beta so it's not the full alpha release, it's, um, it's uh, still being developed but there are some useful tools in there that you may, may, may be able to use. So um, first of all if we go into the sub D tab, um, we'll look at the creation tools and the modifying tools. Um, so first of all if we look at the create side we've got some basic shapes that we can create and we can also convert some basic shapes to sub D. Um, but I'm going to start with the torus and we can see that get created. Um, first of all we can view it in two ways, we can view the cage code um, or we can view the shape or both so you can see like such. Sometimes you may prefer to modify it using one or the other. Um, just to show you both, if I use my pull tool now I can make modifications so if I select on this surface here I can extend that and you can see that growing. If I want to add a, a set of surfaces, if I accept the surface and also the edges, so I'll just double click to get those edges, we can see how we can extend those there as well. Just to show you if I turn off the cage, um, the same thing happening if we do it on this surface here. And I'm just going to just get the edges of that, just so I can do both at the same time. So you can start to see how that would work. So that's just modifying it. You can use the move tool or the pull tool there. If I create another sub D, I'm going to just create another torus and I'm going to use my move tool. So you can see these in our tree up on the left hand side. I'm just going to just move this to the left hand side. I'll now start to show you some of our modification tools. So we've got the subdivide tool, bridge, split, crease. These tools can also be used if you've got other geometry, for example, if you've converted a facet to a, to a, um, a sub-D surface, which we can look at in a shortly. Um, but first of all, I'm going to show you how the bridge tool works. The bridge tool will allow you to actually connect to subdivision surfaces. So if I select these two here, and then I hit the tick box, and we can see how those <coughs> are connected. The subdivide tool basically allows you to split your sub-D body um, into more surfaces so we can see that there and we can also manually do that using the split tool so if I use the split tool and I actually want to just select on this edge here I can just do that manually and you can see how that's just increased this area by um, a section we can also use the split the bridge tool sorry to actually create holes through the model so if I'm selecting on these four surfaces and the same four on the opposite side and then hit the tick box, we can see how we can actually use the bridge tool to create holes through the part. So um, that's just a very quick example of how we can use the, um, the sub D tools. Um, I'm now going to show you an example of how you can actually convert a faceted body into sub D, which may make it easier to manipulate and work with. In this next step, we'll be looking at how we can actually convert a faceted body into sub D, which may make it easier to manipulate and actually modify. So um, in this example, we can see that we've actually got a, a fasted body. Um, this is originally a scan. It's obviously been smoothed and improved, um, but it's a, a solid um, STL. And um, we can use the facets to sub D tool. So we click on this one, click on your facets. It'll give you a tolerance. You can obviously play around with that tolerance. You can increase it, decrease it. Obviously, the smaller it is, the longer it will take, etc. So. Um, once you've set your tolerance, just hit the tick box and then wait for it to um, give you a, a sub D surface or a sub D body. Once you have converted your uh, model to sub D, you'll end up with um, something that looks similar to this. Um, so you can see in our tree on the left hand side now, we've got the sub D solid and we've also got the facets. If I just tick on the facets, we can see how that is overlaid over the sub D surfaces. So now we can start to make modifications if we wish. So again, using potentially tools like the, um, the pull and the move tool, I might select on 
uh, maybe this back area here if I just slept on some of these surfaces I'm just going to just slept on a few more on the underside so I might want to make a modification here things that you probably might be quite difficult with um, the STL body so you can see how I'm making this modification this time using the move tool rather than the pull but you can see how I've just modified this area here using our um, uh, modify options pull or move and um, again we can use things like the bridge tool and this and the split tool to make in increasing areas add more regions so for example if I wanted to make a, a bridge between something maybe between here and here I can hit the bridge tool for maybe hit the bridge tool first select those two pieces and we can now see I've just joined those two areas up same way with obviously punching a hole through something if we wanted to punch a hole for whatever reason through this area I can use the the bridge tool to do that as well so that's just a, a quick real world example of how you may use the the sub D to actually convert from facets into sub D and then it might be easy to actually manipulate and modify again if you have any questions on the sub D please leave them in the comments.